Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review, a long time coming review. Actually, I've been sitting on a decan of this for God knows how long, four or five years maybe. Um, this is Frederick Mall's The Night, and um, this is courtesy of Muda Seer. Thank you, Muda Seer. Um, and this fragrance is, I would say, a divisive fragrance because there are people who claim that it is literally the greatest oud fragrance or just one of the greatest fragrances of all time and there are others that think that this is overpriced by a margin of 10 and it's not worth the money and so we're going to break it down today okay we're going to talk about the pros and the cons and um sorry i've been away for a couple days here basically um in in dallas both of my sports teams uh well two of my favorite sports teams the the dallas stars and the um Mavericks were in the Western Conference Finals. The Mavericks are now going to the finals. And so what ended up happening, though, is every other night there was a different game. And so it was one night the Mavs, the next night the Stars. So on top of the workload and everything else going on, it was just very hard to upload videos. But this is a fragrance that I've been wearing for the last couple days as my scent of the day. I actually did a fresh spray about 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, maybe. You can still see the sheen on my hand, okay? And here is the dent in my decant to prove usage and you can see i've given this a good amount of wear so i've probably worn seven mils uh, of the night which is a hell of a amount when you think about all you really need is one spray with this because it's very very strong okay so let's read the blurb and um we'll talk a little bit about my thoughts it came out in 2014 and many people tie it to portrait of a lady and we'll talk a little bit about why that is portrait of a lady came out in 2010 the night came out in 2014 you could almost call the night a flanker of portrait of a lady although frederick mall uh the brand and the perfumer don't i think you could easily kind of tie the two together if you will okay but uh it is extremely expensive 50 mils is 1250 dollars which is uh, 100 mils is $1,950, and if you really want to splurge, 250 mils, in case you need a lifetime supply, is $3,425, which is, my God. Um, I've never actually held a 250 mil Frederick Mall bottle in my hand, but I bet it's badass. Um, so here's the very short blurb, which I remember this blurb being much better than, than this. I don't know if they shortened these or what, but it's pathetically small now. It says, A Love Song of the Middle East by Master Dominique Ropion. A generous dose of Indian oud meets an equally staggering dose of Turkish rose. We'll talk about those dosages in this review. With hints of saffron, amber, and sandalwood. And that's it. That's the entire write-up. Uh, I will say the picture shown is interesting because it shows a bottle of the night next to what looks like this copper looking mesh, which is interesting because we'll talk about why that applies here later on. But um, so here's the thing. I used to think initially when I first got this decant from Moodis here, I, I don't know exactly when I got it. I'm sure I could probably figure it out, but I'm guessing it was probably around the pandemic sometime. So I'm thinking four years ago, give or take. Um, and when I got it, uh, the last couple of years of Oud experience for me have ramped up substantially, okay? So if you watch my early videos, I'm like, yeah, I like Oud, but I'm not like an expert or anything like that. I haven't smelled a lot of fragrances. And since then, I've almost turned into an Oud head, okay? So I've, I've done all kind of videos on the big artisanal houses. And so when I first got this, excuse me, this decant, I thought this was one of the best Oud scents money could buy, okay? Now, after smelling almost all of the Aris Le Dore's and doing videos on almost all of them and, and most of the important Bortnikoffs and some of the Ensars and all three Feel Oud fragrances and three of the Maxim perfumes. We just did a Maxim live stream. You can check it out, which is Dimitri Bortnikoff's son. Um, I would say this is a average Oud fragrance, okay? Before you crucify me, wait. I would say this is an average Oud fragrance built by a brilliant perfumer. And the brilliance of the perfumer in the composition is what makes this a special fragrance, okay? Um, I'm sort of always reminded of uh, one of my favorite authors, Stephen King, who, when asked in an interview once, how do you come up with all these ideas? How do you get all these plots and twists and turns and stories and all this stuff? And I remember him saying, I just have to sit down and write. And the guy was like, bullshit. I mean, come on, tell us. Like, there has to be some secret. He was like, no, no, I just need to literally sit down and write. And it just kind of comes out of me, okay? 
Um, and now Stephen King, to be fair, I think has fallen politically off the deep end in the last decade. He has gone absolutely insane. But in in the height of his heyday, I really believe he is one of the greatest authors of all time. Um, and it just feels like, you know, he said, the words just have to kind of flow out of me. Okay. It just happens. I sit down and write. I, I can't explain. It just happens. That's what it feels like this fragrance with Dom Dominique Ropion ended up being. It really feels like he created some brilliance out of himself. And why start from scratch with the night when you have something that he could kind of riff off of? Not rip off of, but riff off of. Create something else off of it, okay? And that's what he did with the night, okay? So here's the interesting thing. According to Dominique Robion, the night contains 21% Indian oud. Now, um... That is according to a Parfumo quote. When you go to Parfumo and look up the night, it's one of the things right there. It says, according to Dominique, I'll read it verbatim. Um, it says, according to Dominique Ropion, the fragrance should contain 21% Indian oud. Should contain, okay? Um, so I found that very interesting. And the thing about it, here's my two cents. My two cents is... It doesn't smell as animalic as I would expect for a fragrance with 21% Indian oud. But, to be fair, I've learned a lot about ouds over the last couple of years, and just calling something Indian oud isn't fair. You know, there's so many factors. Was it soaked? Wasn't it soaked? What kind of pot was it distilled in? Um, all of these, how, what was the temperature of the di distillation? What region of India was it coming from? You know, all of those things play a big part of this, okay? So... That's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I do like that they put a percentage on that. I think that's very cool, okay? So, but if the brand says 21%, and that's like an official from Frederick Mall thing, and not just something someone else says Dominique Ropion said or whatever, go with it. It's awesome. Um, now, so to me, um, this doesn't start out as shit running out the back of an ox. At least not anymore. Maybe it used to, but um, not anymore. Now, um... This smells more like vinegar to start with. It smells like a sour, pungent sort of vinegar opening, okay? So when you first spray this, if you're new to Oud, one thing I will tell you about this, this is a fragrance that will teach you patience, okay? Because if you made a video of yourself today, like if today's the first day you smelled the night, okay? And then you made a video of yourself two years in the future, your thoughts on this fragrance would change drastically, in my opinion. Oud is one of the things that people... Um, will say something and years later they'll look back and think, wow, I sound like an absolute idiot, you know, um, later on, right? And that's one of, of course, the problems with putting stuff down or doing videos like this is it's there forever, basically, unless you take it down, right? So for me, um, like I said, my thoughts on this fragrance have changed drastically over the years and it has this kind of... Um, Sort of pungent undertone is a good way to describe it. Yes, it has a little bit of this fermented oud. Yes, it has a little bit of this blue cheese oud fermented thing. I wouldn't say it's fecal at all. Um, and, and for those of you who are not familiar with the oud distillation process, it's basically a very similar to the way uh, kombucha is fermented for tea, let's say. If you ever know that process, it's a similar bacteria to what's in your gut, right? It's a fermentation process, and it gives off a very specific smell, right? And um, what's interesting, though, is this fragrance, when I wear it, for some reason, I think it's the mixture of the rose and the spices and the saffron and the patchouli, the heavy patchouli that Dominique Ropion claims isn't an overdose because that's the way it should be used in the fragrance kind of thing. But it almost has this pungent undertone, like almost when a person has an illness, okay? And when they sweat, you can almost like smell the sickness radiating off of them, right? It's almost like you can smell the fungal infection afflicted in the tree here. There is something very ancient about this fragrance to me personally, something very ancient about this, almost like it feels like it's been here before me and it'll be here after me kind of thing. Uh, it'll remain long after I'm gone, right? And it has the fragrance itself, especially, especially when you're really getting the hit of oud, okay? which lasts for a long time in this composition. We'll talk about that later on. But it has the viscosity of lo like motor oil, okay? And so it smells like this vinegary, sour, slightly bitter, pungent opening, okay? 
with the oud, the saffron, adding that chemical mix to it, if you will. And, you know, the viscosity of motor oil is, is a good example of the opening, okay? Um, and if you can just imagine watching some sports event and a car motor oil commercial comes on, like a castor oil commercial comes on or something, um, uh, or Quaker State or whatever it is, and in the car commercial, they always show the engine heating up and, and the oil almost turns like golden colored, right? Golden hue as it's traveling through the engine, right? Um, and they show off this golden hue oil. Um, there is almost this glow to the night. So the, visco the viscosity of motor oil, but imagine like the glow, right? It's, it's a dark composition, but it glows is a good way to do it, is a good way to think about it. Yes, it's the night, but there's a light on. There's, there's a light somewhere. Wherever that light could be. Some would say the moon, and of course, Frederick Mall then created the moon. Um, and then after night, some would say dawn, and of course, Frederick Mall created dawn as well. So um, that's kind of a good example of the opening, okay? There's this glow to the to a very dark composition. And of course, the oud is, um, it's bracketed, it's shown, it's, it's really given to, to you. But if you've smelled many, many oud fragrances and you're an oud head, um, I don't think that this would uh, excite you on the oud side of things, is where I'm going with this, okay? I think there's a lot of other fragrance houses that would scratch your oud itch, okay? Um, so, so what ends up happening is you get that glow, and um, it's kind of like the heartwood of the tree is glowing, you know? It's like um, you can smell the heat emitted from the sickness. And, and again, if you go back to the sickness infecting a tree, that is literally what oud is. I mean, oud is a fungal infection infecting the tree, and the tree is literally fighting for its life. It's sick. It's fighting for its life. It's fighting for survival. So what ends up happening is there's like a chemical change in the heartwood of the tree, and that is oud, okay? Um, and, and so for me, what ends up happening is these smoky molecules begin to appear in the night, and if you've smelled Dawn, and I have a decant of Dawn, again, thanks to Mudasir, and I have a decant of Portrait of a Lady somewhere, God knows where, but I'll, I'll review those very soon, hopefully. Maybe we'll have like a Frederick Mall marathon here in a little bit. But um, Dawn uses bits and pieces of that sort of um, woody molecule that feels like it's on fire, that smoky, woody molecule. Um, and, and so while dawn and the night are linked in name because after the night comes comes dawn um and and so but dawn uses much more of that frankincense smoky type material than the night it's almost like a, you know his desert gem collection is almost like a riff on a riff on a riff on a riff he keeps kind of taking something and pulling that string if you will um and so Yes, this has little bits and pieces of smoky elements, but the but the real smoky Middle Eastern frankincense bomb is is dawn in the composition. This has little bits and pieces. Maybe like it's night, so you know the smokiness is in the background, but you can't see it, kind of thing. You can only see it. Um, you can only see it, the outline or something far away, right? So, um, to my experience. Um, after really kind of having more and more experience with oud, I have come to the conclusion that the night is a very wearable oud. Like, for example, I wore this to work Thursday as my scent of the day, and I wore it today as my scent of the day working from home, okay? It doesn't have some of the super challenging animalic aspects of some of the ouds I've discussed on the channel. Like, for example, uh, there's an there's entire breakdown of all of the history of oud collection by Arige Ladore, and one of the most challenging was the history of Chinese oud, and that has this almost like fungal burnt, imagine like setting a mushroom on fire or something extremely strange, right? It's a very strange Hainan Chinese oud. I talked about that on the channel, um, and all of these weird ouds that I've kind of discussed on the channel over the years, um, this is a very wearable take on oud to me for the night. The other thing that I think really plays in its favor is that initially Portrait of a Lady was liked by kind of a fringe element of society, like the super weird perfume nerd head, nerds, right? And then as time has gone on, it became more and more and more mainstream. And now I feel like this DNA has been copied and cloned and, and 
you know, so many other houses tried to do their take on Portrait of a Lady. Diptyque has one. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. But um, I think that the public in general has become more aware of this DNA, right? And um, it's become somewhat of a modern classic uh, as the years have ticked on. And, and I think next year will be the 15-year anniversary. It will be the 15-year anniversary um, very soon. So you're probably going to see like a special anniversary bottle or something from Frederick Ball. But what, what's interesting about the night is if you pay attention, even in the first 15 minutes or so of the fragrance, when most people are like, oh my God, it's the most challenging oud of all time, you kind of get, yes, you get the fermented side of the, of the Indian oud, but if you pay attention, you can smell Portrait of a Lady kind of lurking in the background, even from the beginning, okay? Um, the clove and spice combination from Portrait of a Lady is kind of the first indication you get. Of course, along with the big rose, which we'll talk about, but um, quickly you're going to get that rose, patchouli, spice combination. If you know Portrait of a Lady, you will smell it in the night very, very early on. Maybe not the first time you wear the night, because you may be focused on that oud note from the very beginning, but that will fade. Your nose, at least for me, my nose will focus on more and more of the composition as you get used to the oud that's used here, okay? The signature of Portrait of a Lady is really shining through. So I've got a little bit of a sore throat, so I'm trying to kind of continue to talk through this. Um, but basically, the night is this oriental rose oud combination. Um, and, and Portrait of a Lady turned out to be like the perfect chassis to staple um, a big oud note onto. The smoky molecules um, make the composition almost feel not like there's frankincense. Like in Portrait of a Lady, you smell it and you're like, okay, this is definitely frankincense and rose and, and a big giant patchouli, right? Some people have called it a purple patchouli, a purple take on patchouli. I could see that. Um, this feels like the smoldering smoke is coming from the heartwood of the oud tree. Like it's the oud giving off the smoke. The oud is giving off its life force, if you will. And probably 15 to 10, 15 minutes in, um, the fragrance starts to relax into something that really smells much more recognizable as Portrait of a Lady. Mold, right? The mold of Portrait of a Lady with that oud saffron and kind of jammy, waxy rose that feels like a kaleidoscope. It feels like a kaleidoscope of rose colors, all these different colors of reds and pinks and all this stuff. And to the credit um, of the oud being used here, a lot of times, one of my biggest beef when like a niche or a designer house does an oud fragrance, now that I've really got to know artisanal perfume, when I smell like an oud from Amouage or something like that, right? A lot of times I feel like the oud will smell sort of um, in a way where you get it right in the opening, right? It hits you with the oud note from the very beginning and then two or three minutes in, it begins to fade away. Roja is a very similar thing. I complained about this when I when I reviewed his um, um, Taif Rose or, or Taif Oud fragrance. I forget what it was called. I think it was Taif Oud. Um, the one that was originally a Fortnum and Mason exclusive and then they put it into the regular Taif Oud bottles last year or something. Um, and, and it sells for like 800 bucks on Roja's website or something. Um, and, and really the Oud was very beautiful in the first couple minutes and then it slowly begins to transition into something else. And that's a big complaint of mine with a lot of these non-artisanal house ouds that last and last and last into the dry down. And here, um, it doesn't quickly morph into something else. Um, remember, oud is a very heavy note normally. It, it's it's usually used as a bass note. Now here in in the night they list note they list oud as a heart note. Okay. Um, but remember, it shouldn't fly off your skin in a minute or two and be gone. It just shouldn't. That's, that's um, uh, for some reason in my head, I always think of, you know, some sort of like money saving technique or some ploy that the houses are using to kind of give you a, a very small amount of oud in a composition, give it to you early and then switch on to something else, okay? Uh, but the night, to be fair, the beautiful rose and the beautiful oud go on and on and on into the dry down. Even though it's not a challenging oud to my nose, it still can be smelled. It can be enjoyed, okay? And I like that. So it's almost like if you've gone through a challenging time and it's the middle of the night, maybe you're alone, you just want the next day to start or something, and anytime that happens, what happens? The night just goes on and on and on and on. And you're like, fuck, I just want the sun to come up and go to work or something, right? Um, 
And, and so, um, I, I would, I would bet my bottom dollar that there is some sort of heavily, uh, supported patchouli, um, you know, that's supporting the oud, let's say. Some sort of big patchouli, very similar to what was used in Portrait of a Lady here, is supporting the oud into the dry down, would be my guess. Even though the note listing doesn't list patchouli in the night, uh, it's a very simple note listing according to Parfumo. Turkish rose, saffron, oud, frankincense, and sandalwood. That's it. That's the only thing that um, Parfumo lists. I think it's probably a very incomplete note listing, is my guess. Um... But, I mean, I think there's probably more going on. Um, but I do like that the oud goes on and on into the dry down, even though I think it's heavily supported by patchouli. Um, and both fragrances, The Night and Portrait of a Lady, okay, they both list Turkish Rose or Turkish Damascena. Um, and... Um, so the rose in the night does smell slightly different, and I'll review Portrait of a Lady one of these days, but it could just be the effect of the oud and saffron that's kind of playing sh with shadows on the rose, if you will. Um, but oud and saffron are missing from Portrait of a Lady, so, and there's some notes in Portrait of a Lady that are missing from the night, okay? So, um, you know, that could be one, one reason why that the rose smells different, even though they're both listed as Turkish rose, okay? And, and Dominique Ropion has specifically claimed that the Turkish Rose Damascena note uh, ingredient here is distilled in um, copper pots, okay? Uh, and as many of you know, different distillation techniques, whether it's copper pots or stainless steel, those are the two main ones usually, can kind of give a different twang or a different smell. I think stainless steel can be kind of distilled out or, or, you know, there are tricks to hide the smell of the stainless steel. Uh, and copper pots usually add a little bit of like a roundness to it, a softer roundness to the ingredient from what I've heard, because copper has a, a traditional antimicrobial properties in and of itself, right? So, so the distillation can, can make things smell differently. Dominique Ropion is on record saying this is a rose distilled in a copper pot. So just FYI. And interestingly enough, that image I mentioned on the Frederick Mall website right now in 2024 has this copper, like, uh, um, almost like a, you know, copper mesh on the front page next to the bottle. Uh, and, and of course, the cover of the night of the night bottle, which I don't have here, but I, I did have some of the other desert gems. I could have grabbed one of those. It almost looks like this golden copper looking color in front. Okay. So... Finally, the other link to Portrait of a Lady is this raspberry note, which Portrait of a Lady has a raspberry note. In the night, it almost smells more like a dark berry jelly or conserve or something like that, okay? Um, and this is probably the effect of like these ambery materials that you're smelling. But just imagine a pot with raspberries and strawberries and cranberries and red berries and probably some pink pepper sprinkled on top and you just let that thing cook down to like a sludge okay and that's kind of the um berry this this dark berry note makes itself known occasionally sometimes when you're smelling pure oud you'll get a note of honey or you'll get a note of berries or fruits or you know there's all these different notes that kind of come and go um, you can go watch some of my Bortnikoff, some of my Insar, some of my uh, Aris Ladori reviews, and, and I talk about some of that with some of the different ouds. Here, it literally smells like the, the big kind of imprint from Portrait of a Lady, because Portrait of a Lady had that raspberry here, right? And here it smells like red berries, um, but like in an ambery con context, all right? And maybe you left them in the pot so long where the sludge starts to almost smoke a little bit. And that is the incense note that you're smelling as well, which is probably feels like it's coming from the oud. So that's kind of all of the different highlights of the composition. Now, even though I don't own a bottle of this, I have to say, this is a very special fragrance to me because it taught me a lot. This fragrance taught me to um, never be perfectly sure of your opinion. Never. Okay. Uh, because as the years tick by, your opinions can absolutely change. And um, it also shows how important the perfumer is overall, okay? How important having somebody like Dominique Gropion is to the composition. And to be fair, I mean, the composition is gorgeous. Portrait of a Lady 
and the night by extension is like looking into this beautiful thick dripping rose and that's just so deep and um imagine like different shades of red that are like painted onto the rose which i always think of painting the roses red when i say that but um it's kind of like i once heard a quote someone said you can't imagine how beautiful heaven is because there's so many colors there that the human mind and i can't even imagine right and and um there's a image actually that i um that I found, and I mentioned Stephen King earlier, but this is one of his Dark Tower books, The the Wasteland, which if you never read his Dark Tower, uh, if you like long form uh, stories where they go book after book after book and kind of carry on, um, I would highly recommend this series. Roland's one of my favorite characters ever created, but um, this is the cover of The Wasteland, and you can almost see this galaxy with the rose imprinted. And on the inside, there's the rose with the galaxy inside, right? Uh, and in the story, of course, this was a rose that was like so important that if it got destroyed, the whole the whole of existence would end. But um, and you can see kind of the people singing, like whenever the kid got close, Jake gets close to the rose. There, uh, he hears this like choir of voices sing, this angelic choir of voices singing around the rose. Now. Maybe Portrait of a Lady's Rose is not that beautiful where you start hearing voices, but um, it is a beautiful multicolored rose is kind of the picture, but imagine like this thick, dripping rose, okay? Thick, jammy, waxy, dripping rose. Um, and uh, it is sort of um, perfectly counterbalanced to the rest of the fragrance. You almost have to admire how heavy the patchouli is used here, this earthy, heavy patchouli, and, and made up of all these different fractional distillations to get the patchouli to exactly the way that Ropion and Frederick Mall wanted it. And then, of course, the oud adds this beautiful smokiness, a little bit of animalic. I think how animalic the fragrance is depends on how much your experience with oud is. Like, if you are a Frederick Mall fan and... and and all you've smelled are the Frederick Mall line, and you've never smelled any of the artisanal fragrances I mentioned, this is going to be the most challenging fragrance maybe in your collection. Um, and But if you're someone who has smelled lots of the Ensars and the Bortnikovs and, and the Areges, then this may not seem as challenging to you. But that smoky oud is, is beautiful. It really is. I mean, you almost have to give it a little bit of a salute and a head nod and say, just well done, Frederick Mall and Dominique Robillon. Now, the problem of this fragrance, the downside, okay? We talked about some of the pros. Here are the cons, and it is a big one as far as I'm concerned, the price. Um, quality for price. Some people say you can't talk about price. Um, you know, price means nothing in a fragrance. Bullshit. If the house is selling a fragrance for $2,000, that has to be discussed. You cannot talk about a fragrance and ignore price. Um, it, it, when you're breaking down a fragrance in and of itself, uh, maybe you can put the price to the, to the side, right? But when reviewing a fragrance, I feel like you have to talk about price. It's only fair. Um, and, and so for me, why is somebody paying $2,000 a bottle for this? Why? Is it the rose? No. Is it the patchouli? No. Is it the saffron? No. Although saffron is an expensive note, it's the oud. I mean, the oud is really the main driver of the price for me. It's the reason they can charge th this obscene price. And... You know, I don't, um, my, my biggest issue with the night is that I don't get as much enjoyment out of the oud portion, not the entire composition. So before you crucify me and say, how dare you compare this to a fragrance you paid $35 for? I'm not comparing it. I'm just saying for me, I get just as much enjoyment out of this $35 Ajmal that I bought off of a buddy. Okay. Um, and, and that's a problem for a $2,000 fragrance, in, in my opinion. Therein lies the rub, the biggest rub. And, you know, I hate to say a $2,000 oud fragrance is a starter fragrance, but it wears on me like a starter oud fragrance. Um, the, the rest of the composition, the portrait of a lady mold in the background, is um, what you're paying for. You're paying for the experience of the perfumer and the oud, really, okay? Um, and I just don't think it's anywhere near worth it. It's the reason I'm working off a decant, not a bottle, okay? Um, so for the oud heads, I, if you want to spend two grand, go give it to Ensar or hunt down old Areges or something like that would be my recommendation. Finally, the rose in Portrait of a Lady, um, or sorry, the knight. 
so they claim that the rose is dosed at about 10% rose oil, okay? And they claim that they had to jump through a million hoops to get there because there are all these EU regulations, okay, uh, to, to basically limit the amount of pure rose oil that can go into a composition. So to satisfy the unhinged, power-hungry psychos in Brussels, Dominique Ropion had to jump through a million hoops. He had to use a rose with this certain amount uh, used in, and they had to use another rose that was like this part taken out and all this crazy stuff, okay? And so while that may be true, let's say that's true, and you get to the 10% rose oil, okay? If you're going to charge these kind of prices, you're going to be held to the highest standard. And the problem is, is... Uh, you, you used to be able to buy, I wish Russian Adam would do a part two, but there was a Malik Al Taif fragrance, which is my favorite rose oud combo of all time. Um, and that was 40% royal grade Taif rose. The oud was better. There was real musk in there, real deer musk, um, which I'm sure the night has musk just based on the dry down, even though it's not listed. I'm sure there's musk in here. Um, but you can see my problem and that sold for 250 bucks or something or 300 bucks when it came out. So there is a pro, you know, that's one of the issues. If you're going to, if you're going to charge these prices, you need to be held to the highest standards. And if I had, let's say someone was willing to sell me the bottle, a bottle of Malik Al Taif and I had two grand to burn, um, would I spend it on Malik Al Taif or the night? It would be Malik Al Taif, hands down. All I wouldn't even have to think about it. Um, now, would I own a bottle of the night? Maybe, if I could find it at an amazing deal, which no one would give give you an amazing deal. But let's just say you found it at an amazing deal. Let's say you found someone that was willing to just sell you a bottle at seventy five percent off or something. Would I buy it? Yes, if it was the pre Estee Lauder bottle. If it was the one that was before Estee Lauder got their paws on them in 2016, just, just in case things have changed. I don't know if they have, but there's a lot of folks that claim the, the Oud was different in the earlier versions and this, that, or whatever. I don't know. So reformulation is always a concern with these big conglomerate houses. So that's just kind of my take. That's, a, that's, uh, that's my two cents on it. I would own it for the collection, but I think it's a very wearable oud. I really enjoyed wearing it. I think people around you like it. They like the DNA. They think it smells good. Um, you can wear. It. I think you can wear it to work and not have too big of an issue. Personally, me. Um, I know I wear crazy stuff, but uh, I have no problem wearing the night out and about. I think it's beautiful. So, so yeah, that's my two cents on it. If um, if you have any experience with the night, I would love to know your thoughts. And just holding this, I literally rubbed the name off of it. So it was there when I showed it, I promise. But I'll, I'll put a new little sticker on here. But yes, do let me know your thoughts on the night. As always, I love uh, hearing your feedback, seeing your faces in the comments. It's a joy to do these videos for you guys. I wish I could just do video after video after video, but life beckons. So um, hopefully another review or two to come this weekend. But as always, love doing these. Let me know what you think. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.